So, Solaris 2.0 is out for a little while now, as of the making of this video. It's been two weeks. However, now that it is out, we need to start looking towards the here, now, and what is to come. Obviously, right now there is the beta patches that are currently going out for 2.0, currently on version 2.0.2, .2, which adds a bit of tweaking here and there, as well as some modifications to the war exhaustion system, as it worked in the past, as you would need to white piece out of it, but now you can uh, go for a status quo whenever you want. Uh, of course, you will get zero influence and zero unity once you go over 100% uh, war exhaustion, but still, you know, at least this is a thing, and you don't be for won't be forced out of a war almost instantly. However, we leave the here and now to look at the post-apocalypse. Yes, the post-apocalypse. We're going to move on from 2.0 into the wild yonder. That is a future, as well as 2.1, and who knows, 2.2. Whenever the next batch slash expansion comes out, which I personally would not be surprised if it's around 2.2, maybe 2.3, we shall see. Regardless, the post-apocalypse, today we're going to be talking about a list of items that the developers actively wants to work to from a top-level point of view. This has already been discussed before in Def Diary 50 and Def Diary 69, everybody's favorite number, and uh, we're going to be talking about what has been added since these lists came out and what is new to the lists on what to expect for the future so first of all completed goals ships appearance that differs for each empire so that no ship and no empire ships look exactly the same is in the game although very minimal it has more to do with the colorization of the hull lights more potential for empire customization and build competitive tall empires Definitely a lot more Empire customization in the game now since Death Diary 50, which was probably somewhere, I want to say Highline, maybe a little bit later than that, who knows. But uh, Tall Empires themselves are a little bit borked right now and uh, a bit of a challenge to work. Global food is there. The ability to construct space habitats and ring worlds is there if you own Utopia. Factions added. Uh, at least factions that are a little bit more interesting. You used to have garbage factions that would just, like, slave uprisings and stuff like that. Ability to set rights and obligations to particular species in your empire. Uh, yeah, part of Utopia as well, at least to a certain extent. Billable Dreadnoughts and Titans. Dreadnoughts uh, are not in the game, obviously, for Billables, but Titans are. So they're... It's almost like a 50% uh, completion on this one. Deeper mechanics for synthetics. That's where synthetic dawn comes in. Rework the endgame crises to be more balanced, which is there. And of course, we have contingency now. Rework war to address doom stacks, which was done, obviously, in the apocalypse update. And as well, super weapons and planet killers. And we all know where those are sitting right now. Then there are additional goals. The old goals that haven't been added yet, but may come at some point in the future, as well as the new goals. And we're going to be rattling these off, do a little bit of speculation on what that may be. Uh, galactic community with interstellar politics and a space UN, so like a global council, or at least an intergalactic council, with probably voting for policies and that sort of thing, so that every single faction within that quote-unquote space UN needs to adhere. Uh, deeper federations that start out as loose alliances and can eventually be turned into single states through diplomatic maneuvering. One of the things that would make alliances so much more interesting is right now they are very superficial and overall not really all that good. I, I really want to see more of this sort of thing so you could control a gigantic uh, federation with sub-factions and micro stuff down the down the center of a overall sort of star organization one could even call it a star fleet for that matter more story events and reactive narratives that gives a sense of an unfolding story there's already some of that the narrative of solaris does contain a couple of things that are interesting but i agree there is not a lot of unfolding story as you play there is still a little bit of a single line there and obviously your, your contingency which kind of fits with the whole stuff regarding uh, psionic awakening uh, you've got the hunters you've got the Prithorians, whatnot as well as the uh, fallen empires no, not so much foreign and precursor empires is what i want to say and they all have their own stories and they kind of interlink but right now it's a really 
um, incohesive narrative with just a bunch of puzzle pieces on the wall, and they need to, you know, actually puzzle pieces, pins, I want to say, but they need to take those lines and connect those in order to make that a little bit more interesting. Uh, more interesting mechanics for pre-FTL civilizations. Right now, uh, they are already a little bit more interesting than they used to be at launch, at least. There's a couple more things you can do with them, but it's still very limited when it comes to pre-FTL. You can't start as pre-FTL either, but I don't think that's the direction that the developers want to go into. Uh, living systems, something that has been alluded to since Heinlein, making empire systems feel more alive and lived in. Um, this is where trade, automatic trade ships come in. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. But here are the new goals as of Apocalypse, and there is six of them. And every single one of these is someone that I have talked about in the past and tickles me in all the naughty places. Less micromanagement and more focus on interesting choices regarding planets and the ability to grow planets beyond their fixed uh, current fixed size. So that could be very interesting indeed i kind of do like the tile system on planets as it does give you a little bit of flexibility and choice at least once you start but once uh you kind of get past the mid section of the game they don't really impact it so much or more anymore and it becomes a little bit of a micromanagement hell i would like to say but growing planets beyond a current fixed size kind of already is in the game with the uh, modified version of that ascension perk, uh, which is kind of interesting, where you can actually inflate the planet. They basically put a giant bicycle pump in it, and your slaves pump it, and poof, it's up to three sizes bigger. So there's that. This is the one, one of the two, or even one of the three that I really, really like. <clears throat> Empire, trade mechanics, and trade agreements. Now, trade agreements, to a certain extent, are already in the game, but I want to see more of them. I want to see, I want to get space... Uh, VOC, and I want to see the, uh, the, the, the first corporations in space and play as them, or at least something along those lines. Uh, a galactic market where resources and strategic resources can be imported and exported. Whether or not that's a esoteric up in the sky, up in the cloud market, or a physical market would make things really, really interesting, especially if it's the latter, because controlling marketplaces and then taxing all that stuff could be very cool. Espionage and sabotage mechanics, finally. This is something that has been in some of the mods, especially the uh, Starcraft, uh, Starcraft, he wants to say. Star Trek uh, New Horizons mod that has some of this, especially for the uh, the Romulans as well as the Cardassians that have a little bit of this sort of thing, where you can sabotage ships and etc., as well as doing espionage and assassinations and whatnot. And that sort of thing is really, really cool, and it's really one of the things that makes a game like Crusader Kings a lot more interesting as well. Of course, this is not Crusader Kings and mechanics don't necessarily apply, but still, there's a lot of really cool stuff to be had there. Uh, improving Galaxy and Hyperlane generation with better play systems and dangers. I haven't actually played 2.0 enough yet to really gauge this properly. The placement of systems and dangers, and I would guess that these are things like Leviathans and whatnot, as well as some of the smaller stuff like Pirate Galleons and that sort of thing, or Crystalline Entities, or uh, Rogue Drones, etc. In all honesty, uh, if, the, the, if the developers feel that there is an issue there, then I'm actually really curious about why that is, and what they're saying. Of course, they have metrics from people that uh, have opted into the metrics um, thing that if you, that you get if you build, start the game for the first time. So there's that, but still. Improve, at least, I think it was there. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway. Uh, more anomalies and unique systems to explore. Unique systems to explore for me is such a must-have. Right now, in the game, there's two. There are two unique systems to explore. Those are Sanctuary and Zanam. Now, I, I, this, these are the things that makes the story so much more interesting. Having new anomalies, new storylines. I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing the same corpse in a space pod every single, every single series that I do, or the shadows over the gas planet, and, and all of a sudden I get plus six um, biological science, or whatever you want to call it, or, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I know that there is hundreds of events in the game, don't get me wrong, but 
new stuff, more stuff for those people that have been playing for the game for over two years and want to buy more events. Totally in for that. Absolutely, totally in for that. So that wraps up the goals. There's one more note that we need to touch upon, which is the Death Diaries for the next few weeks, which are going to be post-release focused. Uh, we will uh, get new feature Death Diaries once there are new features to talk about. I, I'm kind of in the middle at the moment, whether or not we'll be continuing on in the post-release support Death Diaries. I do expect to be... Uh, some some dev diaries on that regards, which I will cover. But when it comes to new features and when we have them, I will jump right on top of those. So don't be too worried of that. Uh, there is a screenshot here. Uh, they're reworking difficulty modes in the 2.2 beta update. So difficulty is going to be scaled, actually. Uh, right now, I believe there is three, which is normal, hard, Oh, four actually. Normal, hard, very hard, and insane. And this is going to be scaled down into six different difficulty levels. Ensign, where the AI has no economic, scientific, or military advantage, to scaling, Captain, Commodore, Admiral, and Grand Admiral, where the AI gets a massive bonus to its economy, research, and naval capacity. And good luck keeping up with that particular AI. That's going to wrap things up for now. I hope that this uh, Def Diary was interesting. We have done this one before, obviously, back in Def Diary 50 and 69, but expect this one to come up again at some time in the future. We will see. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and, well, until next time.